Welcome back, everybody, to what is, I hope, a brief explanation of how to do something that just a few short days ago I did not know how to do myself. I've, uh, as anyone who's seen videos would know, been bitten by the Outrunner bug uh, after receiving my first AG Innovations Ninja. I've since added two more. Anyway, moving this along. The AG Innovations Ninja is a new product. It is basically a reflashed helicopter or multi-rotor speed control. It does not specifically enjoy cooperating with the old-timey Airtronics MX3X. I, I'm guessing it's just something about the throttle deadband it doesn't like. So, learning to program this is not terribly difficult. It's just, uh, I'm an old dog and learning new tricks is, is a bit of a challenge to me. I will have the links to everything that I show here in the description. I'm just hoping that if there are some people that are like me, the good old visual learner, I must have read through this page to set this up like 20 times. It's to, it took me an hour and a half. I'm not ashamed to admit it. It took me an hour and a half to get this thing to work. So the first thing you will need is this little guy. It's an Arduino, apparently. And uh, there's what it looks like in person. Look at that. Even comes with the identical blue cable. So there is some truth in advertising. Pretty much everything I'm gonna tell you here can be found on here. So if you can learn by reading, you can just go here and you can figure this all out. I think it, it might even have a link. Yeah, it even has a link to where to buy this. Skipping ahead to hooking it up. So here's Daphne here. This is one important thing to point out. If you have happened to bought, buy a pre-made one of these speed controls. It is, it, there's a chance it will have a BEC. We got three wires going in there. The programmer doesn't want that. So if you have a BEC, you're going to have to either do the razor knife trick and pop out the middle wire, which is the positive lead, or what is smarter, uh, just take a servo extension and, uh, pop the hot lead out of that, then that will be your forever hookup thing. The only thing you have to pay attention to, black wire to black wire. That, that color stays the same. Other colors might change. We plug the guy in. And then we plug the guy into here. Now, I will say, part of the most difficult part of this for me was, 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 I guess, flashing this to turn it into a, this is essentially a castle link for a, a flashed helicopter speed control. So we get that thing over there. We'll move back over here. Hopefully it's still open. This Acer laptop is uh, by computer terms, like a thousand years old. Okay, so there is the multi ESC config tool. We we want to have it on direct connect. I can't work a uh, I can't work a touchpad to save my life. Yeah, like I don't know if anybody picked up the delay there, but I certainly did. And then the only port available is COM3. So I click connect, and then it should bring up this thing that says connect and read settings. And that's after you've gone through the process of flashing this to turn it into a programmer. Then, oh, I don't know how, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna try something. There might, I'm trying to do this with minimal edits, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, here's this guy. He's got a bunch of stuff printed on him. The only ones of any importance, come on, 
It is not. This is already going bad. Okay. Ground and D3. You're going to plug the ground into ground and the signal wire into D3, which I hope I've gotten. I was trying to do that through the camera. Did I get it? Yes. I mean, I guess one could just go along and snip all the other pins off, but we leave it like that. So as there's no BEC, and, and I've fiddled with this before, the only way to make it actually work is to plug in the speed control. So plug this in. And if it makes start tones, you haven't done it right. Mine did not make start tones, so we'll assume that I did it right. Hey, all right. So connect and read settings. The only port that should show up if you've configured the programmer correctly is M1. So we go M1 and it says connecting to ESC right there. And then there we go. Look at that. I did it. I did it. So you'll see you have a bunch of uh, adjustments that you can make here. Now, an outrunner behaves exactly like a brushed motor. So if it's rotating in the opposite direction that you needed to, you can just flip the outside two wires. You can just swap the red and the yellow and bish bosh. I don't know specifically what the advantage is of using reverse rotation, but you have the option to do this. You can see that the AG Innovations Ninja is a reflashed fly color gen. And to my knowledge, this is running the most recent firmware version. Uh, I made no essential adjustments other than to adjust the motor KV right here because the Ninja comes defaulted to, it's either 2200 or 2220, I can't remember. The closer you can get this to your motor's actual KV, the better. I don't mess with this stuff aside from motor KV or if I know that the motor poles are different. The stuff I do mess with is over here on input. And this is only because I have the old radio. If you have a, air quotes here, new radio, GT5, anything made in the last couple of years, why is it not registering in my head? Radio link, any of those, they work just fine. You don't have to mess with anything. You can adjust low voltage cutoff here. Some speed controls might come with it disabled. Uh, the 320 is 3.2 volts per cell. I've never gotten one of these down to cutoff, so I don't even know. Uh, other speed controls I've seen will actually come with a different voltage cutoff, usually higher, usually set at 340, 3.4 volts per cell, which I feel, I, I mean, you know, I guess it's being extra safe. Now, I've only fiddled with it, but this, this is how I understand it. Servo neutral is basically throttle neutral, so it treats everything above 1496 as high and everything below 1496 as low. So when I first hooked this up, this guy, oh, he's so big. When I first hooked that up, I had to put throttle trim to plus 90, basically, because the speed control couldn't find neutral, I guess. Now, this is not super helpful to people unless they're looking at theirs for the first time. I don't remember what any of these numbers were before I adjusted them. I know I took a couple hacks at it, and what you know, while we're here, we've got it open. Uh, so let's set the servo neutral a little higher. Okay, we'll go to 1530, because I'm still... Can I use arrows with this? Yes. Oh, and these go in steps of one. That's nice. So I... I'm still kind of guessing because there's no one really addressing the issue of what those set how to set change those settings to address your old radio problem. So I don't need to mess with anything over on this page. I already have it set the way I wanted. Uh, I've fiddled with servo neutral a little. I've moved it a little higher 
and we will find out if that is better or worse. I click Save Settings, and because it's not doing a whole little lot, right up at the top, writing EE Prom Successful, it's done. I don't know about anyone else. I like to click Close Connection, wait for that screen to go blank, come back over here to the rig. The only one you really need to unplug, let me unplug there. The Speedo is still plugged in. Negative goes this way. I don't button anything back up until I know I've gotten it. When you get tones, you know it still works. All right, we're still in business. Did we, did we mess with the low speed? No. And how we will test that is we go to throttle trim. Okay, I'm still at high 50. Let's see. Oh, I definitely made it better. The only problem I seem to be having with the vintage radio. Oh no, it's fixed. All right. So if you happen to be hooking this up to a, an, a, a vintage Airtronics radio, I guess, and we learned this here together, 1530 on the neutral seems to be the guy. I am still tinkering with the high and low settings, but they are not super critical for my application. Other users may vary because I have a two speed. That is plenty of wheel speed. Now I do notice Here's one thing that might need to be checked. You'll notice very smooth in reverse. Okay, hold on. No, it's about the same. There it is. It gets sometimes it gets a little low speed stutter, which is I think, well, not really stutter. It's just I want it buttery smooth and it's not precisely, but when I first tip the throttle in, there is a decent amount of dead band right here. Let's see if we can you can see the trigger moving, and then we get go. Now in reverse, so there's still some dead band there, but as I don't know specifically what setting does what, this is, this is kind of, I'm kind of guessing. Now the 1530, moving it to 1530 did seem to help, but now I think some of the other settings need to be tinkered with. I don't know how long it'll take me to get to that, and I think I covered what I needed to cover. I will be sure to include those links. It's really, when you see it, when when I first received this, I thought, it looks, it looks kind of familiar. Well, there, there's a, well, let's do it this way, so. There's a castle link. It's a, it's, it's build your own castle link, specifically for outrunners. So skip through this as you will. I ran it on longer than I wanted to. I am going to plug it in a couple more times to the Arduino to see if I can't get that, if I can't get this, that dead band out of the trigger. Everything else feels pretty good now. And I will say, it, I think it's worth it for anyone with a Outrunner speed controller to do this because it really does improve both low speed and, I mean, the bump is, it, it, it definitely, it, you know, it feels tuned when you drive it. So I hope I helped at least one person out there as, uh, I did not know what I was doing. This, this part right here. Let's get this out of the way. This section right here, installing the BL Heli stuff. I must have tried it like six times. So I wish I could be more helpful in that part. I think most people will be able to get it. Anyhow, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, tink with your rigs and then go wheel them.
Uh, leave a comment below if you have any other questions. I will do my absolute best to try to answer them. And if not I, then the uh, some of the individuals who are responsible for getting me hooked on this stuff, I'm sure will chime in with any assistance anyone might need. So that's all for that. Daphne wishes you a good uh, remainder of the holiday weekend. And uh, we both... Hope to see you in the next one.